another DS2 good here, and today I'm taking a look at the LEGO Spider-Man Action Studio set. This came out back in 2002 and retailed for $30 in the United States. It comes with 244 pieces and even a little CD-ROM, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to load up on my computer, but we'll give it a try. This was never before opened, so we're opening it up for the first time. <laughs> Honestly, the slide-out box is stuck inside there. I opened up both sides. All right, let me try one more time. Ugh, got off camera there, but anyways. We have our pieces, which it seems like no numbered bags, and even a catalog at the back, the CD-ROM as well. A 2002 catalog. Oh, it seems like some stickers too. Here's the set all built up. Now let's take a look at those minifigures. So the Spider-Man minifigure of this set surprisingly was exclusive to this one set for 2002, unless you count the combo pack that came with this set and then the smaller Green Goblin set. By the way, I incorrectly said that this was a set with the wrestling scene backdrop as well, but that only comes in the combo pack as an extra. Either way, this design for Spider-Man is actually really freaking cool. I love the design of that silver, which kind of shines at the torso. You have it also on the face print and even at the hips of the legs, which was pretty darn cool to get hip printing back then. And then at the back, you have some nice spider torso printing and also some back head printing. Very detailed figure for 2002. Now the set does include a neck attachment for Spidey, and we have this piece of the modified 1x2 with the clear pole connection. And at the very end, we have this stick so that you can move Spider-Man and make it look like he's moving on his own because that clear part doesn't always get caught on camera. At the very end, there's a print of a 1x2 that does appear in some other LEGO Studio sets. Not only did we get Spidey, but we also got a Peter Parker minifigure, which I believe was our first Peter Parker. This design has an exclusive face print to this set, where this one side of the face only ever appear in this one set, which looks interesting. The torso print is from some 90s sets, and then his alternate face is one that we've seen quite a bit even more recently, though it has a little bit of a lesser quality to it. The director is the same one that appears in a lot of LEGO Studio sets. They should have made him look more like Raimi than Spielberg. Come on, LEGO. The cop is pretty standard for some 90s sets with that torso and face print. The crook minifigure is in line with the stuntman minifigure of a lot of other LEGO Studio sets. Nothing too special with this guy. For the build of the set, we'll start off with the building first. For the build of the bank, on one side we have the exterior, which we do have this card design for that shot of the exterior door. And then for the interior, that other side of the card has an interior design, and there's not too much going on. To the right of the interior, we have this vault, which has a sticker on the door. Inside, we have a 1x2 print of a $100 bill. You do get another one of those hidden at this desk right here, the $100 bill. And you have a seat back there, but yeah, not too much to the interior of this set at all. At the very top with the windows at that top floor. A little bit of standing space inside there. I like the size of the frame and the window piece. I haven't seen it in this size before, and so it's nice to get two of them in this set. There's also some interesting stickers at the side with the World Unity Festival design. Total of two of them in this set, which is just good for world building in LEGO cities. Now these top window designs actually have a play feature where you could pull these bars forward and make them fall over. You could also push them at the back if you'd like to make them fall over another way. And you can rearrange those as you'd like because they just connect onto a one by two plate, which is a very loose connection, which makes them easy to play around with. But I don't think I have too much else to show with the building design, but just one last thing I wanna note with this building design, these pillars at the bottom in gray and tan only come in this one set in that coloring. And if you're wondering how this card works, it's a little bit better than the material of like paper, but I don't know. It's almost like a, a photo material, I guess would be it, or like a plastic, but it can get bent and destroyed very easily. So you'll still have to be careful with it. Now let's move on from the building. There's a build for this police car, which I quite like the shaping of. I mean, it doesn't look great. It looks definitely 2000s, but it just has a really weird shoe-like shape in its simplicity. There's a sticker across multiple pieces, unfortunately, at the back there. You have some stickers at the side as well with three just lining up there and then three on the other side. And you have enough space to fit one minifigure sitting down controlling the car. And that's a pretty tight fit. For some more setting builds, we have two barricades and then these two flame builds. I touched on it briefly, but this net that they include is a nice inclusion to throw over the criminals. And finally, we have builds for some studio setup with these two studio lights. 
You can adjust them by moving them up and down as they're attached by this one by one modified clip. Clip? Did I say clip and play at the same time? <laughs> it's a new one. And then we also have this camera setup, which this design can be moved up and down as it's on a hinge connection. And they also have a printed one by two tile of that tape. And these two studio lights are identical builds. But that's it for the builds of this set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. Oh, actually one thing I have to note before moving on. This part does fit on a little bit better than that Explosion Studio set. So maybe not all of the camera pieces are defective. All right, box time. <laughs> We have a square box with this design. We already took a look at it in the beginning, but it does have this really cool alternate build at the back of this little dock rescue. For the paper materials included, we have an ad for the Lego Club, or sorry, Lego Shop at Home catalog. Uh, catalog in itself for 2002, which I've looked at in other videos before, but let's just take a quick let's see. Oh, we got some Alpha Team Deep Sea. I want that big base set. Oh, some studios right there, even Jurassic Park 3, which I had one of those studio sets when I was younger. Uh, and uh, Star Wars right here, which I've done that review for that set. Uh, these two are nostalgic for me at the right. But uh, yeah, I've done a full video on that one before. The instructions themselves do have a little alternate build at the end, which is the one on the box. That looks pretty cool. Now let's check out that CD, which says sound effects. Unfortunately, yeah. This CD is not working. I'm trying to install it and it installs, but the program just doesn't show up on my computer. So rip Lego Studio sound effects. So I'm on YouTube uploaded some of the demo videos they have and you can even hear the sound effects. They're pretty darn cool, but that's all I have to say for the packaging. Let's move on to the final verdict. So overall, the Spider-Man Action Studio was actually pretty substantial for a $30 play set. There was a lot included here, and I really love the studio's idea of having not only the action scenes, but these film backdrops with the studio lights and the cameras and everything. This design, I do kind of wish I got with that combo pack, because apparently that had more, that had that extra wrestling scene part. And maybe I'll just have to get a second version of this with that combo. But as it stands, this was actually a really cool set to take a look at. Let me know what you guys think of this set and the studio's line in the comments below. Sorry I couldn't access that CD, but I'll see you guys later. Peace out.